Imagine somehow at the end, you end up just face down before God. You picturing that? You hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Is there anything on this earth you want more than to hear those two words out of the mouth of God? I remember reading verses about God, and it talks about how the whole world, he sits above the vaults of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Whenever I would think of God, I would think about those paintings I'd see on the wall, right? You know, of Jesus with long blonde hair holding sheep. No one ever described God the way the Bible described him. You guys, it changed everything when I understood the holiness of God. Understand that the, the word holy means separate, set apart. That word holy, it's about like, like when, when Moses, when, when, when Moses asked God, God, can I just see you? And God says to Moses, he goes, no man can see my face and live. Do you understand who I am? Do you understand my holiness? I am so different from you, so set apart from you, that if I tore the roof off this place and let you just get a glimpse of my face, you would die. You see his face, you die. Okay, that's not normal. Okay, that's holy. He's set apart. He's different. And, and every once in a while, every once in a while, though, he'll let a human being get some sort of veiled glimpse of him. I mean, Isaiah 6 says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. I don't know what you think of when you think of God. What if you walked in here tonight and you saw a being in this room and he filled up the entire place? And he says, and above him, there were these high angels called the seraphim and each of them had six wings. He says, with two, he covered his face, with two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. Man, they're covered from head to toe covered from head to toe in the presence of God because even the high angels are like, man, I, I can't look at him. I can't let him look upon me. I'm not worthy to look at him. I'm not worthy for him to look upon me. I'm going to cover myself up completely. And it says one called out to the other. One angel was screaming to the other. He goes, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory and the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. What in the world would you do at that moment? What Isaiah did is he says, woe is me. I am lost, I am ruined. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Woe is me. Woe was the strongest term. It was like this guttural, like, oh. He says, I am ruined. In the Hebrew, it literally means I am about to be destroyed by him. See, the first thing that you're going to be struck with when you see God is your own sinfulness. When you see how perfect he is and how holy and how powerful he is, you, you know, you immediately just go, you're going to kill me. Imagine the high angels covering themselves up screaming, holy, holy, holy. Imagine everything shaking, filling up with smoke. And then you approach this God. Don't you understand the fear of God is what leads to life. The fear of God is what gives me security. The fear of God makes me not fear any of you. Here is a prophet of God going, I'm disgusting, he's going to kill me. Verse 9 says, One of the angels, the seraphim, flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my lips. 
He touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Someone else paid for it. Someone else covered over it. Man, what did Isaiah do to deserve that? See, he didn't say, hey, God, if you let me do this, I'll do... No. It was all about what Christ was going to do. 